welcome to episode number 302 of the Money Money Tip Podcast presented by Fully Funded Life. My name is Joe Sangle. We are committed to helping you win with your money. And I am joined by my co-host, Megan Hibbert. Are you fired up? Fired up. Fired up. Let's roll up. Episode number 302. Can you believe it? That's wild. And we're going to talk about I am by. a topic that, you know, we were reflecting on it in episode number 300 about the topics people really like. This is one of those topics that people like to hear us talk about. And that is what? Red debt. Card. Yeah. So debt. Credit card. And it's debt. So what are we going to do? Give the official title. Yeah. Okay. So the official title is The Truth About Credit Cards, Myth First Reality. Okay. So let's start real quick, real quick. What was your first credit card? When did you get it? Um, see, I was a late credit carder. So okay. I didn't have one until I was married to Jordan. Serious? Mm -hmm. You just ran debit card life. Yeah, debit card life was Come on. Yeah. I don't know why. Like it wasn't like a conviction or anything. There you it go. was just so like you went through college and didn't get a credit card. That's yeah. amazing. Way to go. Um aren't you really good? Aren't I mean, special? I guess, um, but I, I, I started my credit card journey my first weekend at Purdue. Yeah. I filled out the credit card applications. A week later, I had one in my mailbox from Advanta. <laughs> Advanta credit card. Maybe we can Google an Advanta card, uh, Jeff, and just put that on the screen there and just Advanta. Um, I still that, remember the logo. It's a, I don't even know if they exist anymore. <laughs> I haven't seen them ever. But they gave me a credit card, and I think I had like a $250 a month. But hmm. I quickly ran out of yeah. limit. Couldn't pay it off. Um, and if you're not careful, and you have a story like mine, unlike Megan's, and you run up, have you ever had credit card balance you could not pay off every month? No. Aren't you special? <laughs> so the bottom line is, um, if you've ever been like me and ran up your credit cards, and unlike Megan, who's never had a credit card balance she couldn't pay off every month. This is why we're good men then you might start believing some things as if they're true, mm -hmm. but they're actually myths. And we're here today to address credit card myths, credit card reality. And so let's go with the first one. Go, Megan. Help yeah. us, since you're Miss Goody Two-Shoes, oh you God. and Jordan. <laughs> okay, so our first myth is credit card gives you lots of free points and rewards. Mm. They do, but they do, Megan. They give me lots of free points and rewards. They do. I do. I do like the, the points and rewards. You do get points and rewards? Are they free? What's the truth? No. The truth is <laughs> what? The truth is it's in the price of everything you pay. Yeah. So when you are transacting with any vendor with your credit card that gets you all those points, what you don't know if you've never been on the vending side, if you've never been on the business side of it, rewards cards charge a larger percent transaction fee to the merchant. Like when we sell books and resources and somebody uses their rewards card, that's a higher percentage <laughs> that we have to pay to the credit card company. And as a result, ding, 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 we charge higher prices for our stuff. That's what we'd have to do because we are not a nonprofit organization. Any business you transact with can't operate with no profit. So in reality, the cost of everything is up because of the wide prevalence of rewards cards. Now, it doesn't mean we don't like them. doesn't mean that we don't have them ourselves. But the fact is it artificially inflates the the cost of everything, goods and services that are happening from merchants. So, so just recognize that, that yes, you're getting your points, but many times if you go to that merchant and say, I'm paying with cash, can I get a deal? What's the difference to them? You know, the difference is they want to pay that higher rewards card merchant mm -hmm. price. And as a result, they would give you a cash discount of two, 3%. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So, I can tell you right now, I've gotten some pretty good deals by going to somebody with some cash money, y'all. Okay, let's talk about another myth. Well, here's the myth. Credit cards are the problem. <laughs> That's why I had all the debt. Credit cards are the problem. Yep. Is is that the truth or is that a myth? It was. What'd you say? What'd you sneak in? <laughs> you agreed with me. It was. We can do the replay. It was. 
And then you whispered it away from me. You're looking away from me. You're scared. It was not <laughs> the problem. What what was the problem? The credit card isn't the problem. You were the problem. I'm the problem. <laughs> Joe Sangle is responsible for all credit card problems in the world. You need to um, be playing that Taylor <laughs> Swift song. I mean, what is that? I'm is that is that a Taylor Swift song? She has a problem when she talks. She's the problem. Hi. Is that a song? It is. Hi, it's me. I'm the problem. Okay. okay, I'm not a Swifty. Are you Swifty? I do like their stuff. Hey, Swifty. Okay. So anyhow, credit cards aren't the problem. They are an enabler of a deeper problem. That's the truth. Hmm. So that many times people are like really frustrated with their credit card companies and they're they're frustrated with their high balance. They're frustrated with the very large interest charges. And the reality is they sign the line to every bit of that debt and they want to blame the credit card. So when we do coaching for people, many of them are very frustrated with the credit card companies. And listen, I totally get it. And you're paying 24.99%, 27.99%, like all these consumer credit cards at Lowe's, Home Depot, TJ Maxx, where, wherever it is, Old Navy. I, I can understand why you're frustrated, but that credit card was not the problem. It was an enabler, enabler of a deeper problem. And that deeper problem, Megan, is our human desire for impulsive spending, mm. that instant gratification. That's the problem. I would also say it's a problem of not having a budget, not having a plan. And that's the truth about credit cards is they are not the problem. But if you have this problem and it's an uncontained problem, yeah. which I had, of impulsive spending, not going to go well. Anything you want to say to that? I mean... I think a lot of people have this, like, I can never have a credit card or I have to avoid credit cards or all credit cards are bad. And they're not. It's mm -hmm. just, have you trained yourself to know how to utilize a credit card correctly and right. how to pay off the balance? And like, have you changed the way that you're dealing with money? Yeah. Which I think a lot of times people, like, I don't think it's a blanket statement of all yeah. credit cards are bad. Like, I think that is a myth. I, I started out kind of repeating Dave Ramsey's type of statement that yeah. all credit cards are bad, they're wrong, they're evil. Um, and then I realized well over half of people have credit cards never pay interest. Yeah. And they pay them off every month. And it, it became apparent to me that I lived without credit cards for six years because I had to get rid of them because the, the fact that they enabled this crazy spending, this impulsiveness in me, mm -hmm. I had to I had to disconnect that. And subsequently, six years later, when I went back and got a credit card, You're I had changed. Yeah. I had successfully contained frivolous, like frivolity in spending. I like that word. Fancy word. Word of the day. Frivolity. frivolity. Let's talk about another credit card myth and yep. talk about some truth. All right. So our next one is you have to have a credit card to get a great credit score. You do not have to have that. So credit scores are calculated by many different things. It's about the type of credit. Is it revolving like a credit card or installment, like you're paying something off? How much debt you could get, your credit limits, and how much of that you've consumed, which is called credit utilization, you know, your payment timeliness, do you have any outstanding judgments against you? And when you look at that, uh, credit cards can help you build your credit score but of course, if you're missing payments with them and you're using all of your credit limit, that is actually going to be a huge harm to your credit score. You do not have to have a credit card to get a great credit score. But let's make no mistake about it. A credit score is a debt management score. So it does not figure in how much money is in your bank savings account, how well you budget, how much income you produce. It is solely interpreting how well you can handle debt within your purvey. And so uh, you can have a car that you're paying down and build a great credit score. You can have a student loan as long as you pay that on time that can help build your credit score. So you do not have to have a credit card to get a great credit score. It almost feels like you get penalized mm -hmm. for not having debt. You mm -hmm. know, like you go to buy a house. Well, they're going to need your credit score or they're, you know, like to get them like the mortgage and figure out how much they're going to lend you and all that kind of stuff. But it almost feels like like the way that you described it, if, if it is a debt score, but if you're not doing all of these things, you know, yeah. what if you don't have student loans? What yeah. if you don't have a car payment? What if yeah. you, you know, like it almost feels like you're getting penalized for you not. Penalized. <laughs> You'll have to go through something called manual underwriting. 
because that's not normal. Yeah. And what what we're trying to do here in this episode in our brief time that we've had together is I want to challenge every per- person who's listening. Um, are you bleeding any myths about your credit cards and your credit card debt if you have it? Um, because they are not the problem. They're an enabler of a deeper rooted problem that you don't have a budget, that you can't live within your means, you can't control impulsively. I've had those issues. That they give that all the points and rewards are free. No, we're actually paying for that extra. Could you negotiate with cash? Cash money can get you some steep discount. And that credit card is not necessarily for you for you to get a great credit score. There are many other ways to get a great credit score. So, hey, what are some other myths that you see your friends, your family, maybe even you yourself have believed that you just you just realize looking back, it's a myth. It's not true. And then what is the truth? Share it in the comments. We want to hear from you. And hey, if you do us a favor, will you share this episode with some family, friends, people that are trying to attack their credit card debt? We'd really love to be able to help them with it, see things from a different light and help them to become debt free. Hey, thanks for being a part of the Money Money Tip podcast today. We also encourage you to check out our membership community, Fully Funded Life. You can learn more about it learn about the unlimited coaching that's available through it with live money coaches, all of our online learning platform at fullyfunded.life. Have a great week, everybody. Hey, everybody. Joe Sangle here. Thanks so much for watching this video. Hey, I encourage you to click the links that are provided to watch a lot of more helpful content that'll help you live your fully funded life. Thanks for being a part of our community.